The amazing thing about Ravonic microphone technology is it pushes everything you want and love about Shure Dynamic Mics even further. We understand the principles of acoustics down to its core. That's this thing that makes Shure very special. We have this expertise in-house. We have people that are very passionate about this. With Ravonic technology, we went back to our roots and said, the idea of using two microphones and combining them together, what can we accomplish with that? We have this very brand new concept that we can do pretty cool things with. So it's, it's kind of this next step in the evolution of the Shure Dynamic microphones. Starting all the way back to our origins, prior to the Unidyne invention from Ben Bauer, the only way to create a directional microphone was using two separate microphones and then combine them. It was large, it was heavy, and it didn't work that well. What the Unidyne brought to the table was improved directionality utilizing only one single element called the Unidyne, unidirectional dynamic. That was 1939. It is the basis, it is the core technology of every dynamic microphone made today by anyone. Moving towards the Unidyne 3, which is in the SM58 and SM57, we were able to take that uniphase principle and put a shock mount on there so that you could finally hold a microphone in your hand. That was the mid-60s. Advancing that into the beta line, tightening the pattern, making a more isolating microphone for louder stages. And then moving towards where we are today, the KSM8 the world's first dual diaphragm dynamic microphone. So the KSM-8 was the next step in the evolution of the Unidyne's series. It inherits all of the stuff from the Unidyne, but also we had to redefine kind of how that, the structure looked so that we could attach this second diaphragm to it. But the benefit there to the user is a controlled proximity effect. It's basically a proximity effect in the off axis. In the advanced development of designing the dual dyne KSM-8, we learned a ton about the DNA of the Unidyne principle. And then bringing us back full circle to today, where we are with Ravonic technology, taking two transducers again and combining them to create the best of your desired sound and removing the undesired sound. This was the first prototype? This was the fir first prototype. And it was proof of concept kind of thing but we have this, this kind of imbalance now between the, any kind of handling noise, you know, you get, and then the actual sensitivity you're left with here. Yep. And so it's like, all right, well, how do we get rid of that? We learned that the design of this new transducer could not be supported in the pneumatic shock mount design. Right. And that, that pushed us to then now think about how are we going to isolate this cartridge because we can't do it in the way we've traditionally done it. The Ravonic system is basically the Unidyne system plus this other additional second motor subsystem. I figured out a kind of clever way to take that second transducer and not only use it for handling noise, but also use it to improve the polar pattern. They both couple to the same you know, handling noise that gets into them, and so we're canceling the handling noise out with it, but we're also doing something that's pretty unique is it literally subtracts from it output from the off axis. So it takes the polar pattern and pulls the polar pattern into a better cardioid or super cardioid. So we went from something this size, where a stack up of two things that were somewhat isolated to, let's take it down to something this size. By utilizing that second motor, that second transducer, we can essentially take all of the desired things and amplify them. And we can take all of the undesired things and cancel them. And once we learned that this technology was productizable, you know, mm -hmm. that's when we started getting in deep into the manufacturing design of how we assemble this reliably, right? Right. So how do we go from making one on the bench or a couple on the bench to making hundreds of thousands of microphones that are all the same? That's the real challenge. And that's where we rely heavily on our operations group, on our on your manufacturing group. Making dynamic microphones is hard already. Uh, and when this technology came in and we are now making a microphone with two motors instead of one, uh, we knew we kind of had to step it up. We had to reinvent the way we manufacture our microphones to accomplish that. It is a higher level of complexity than anyone else has ever made in the past. We have the resources here that we can put the investment into automation on the line, whilst also working with our skilled operators to make a high quality microphone. 
The first challenge with Fravonic technology was not only that we had to make the motor twice, but the motors had to match. So the better you can match the engines, the more you can cancel. So we instituted a new manufacturing technology so that we were able to, in real time, adjust how we are putting acoustic resistance in our motors. Throughout the manufacturing of Nexodyne products, we measure that resistance a dozen times. Whatever it takes to keep that consistency, that is that sure quality as it comes off the production line. One theme that keeps coming back with users who test Nexodyne is the clarity. That makes your job a lot easier. The artist hears their voice the way they want to hear it. The engineer achieves that with minimal work. It's a complicated product that only Sure could make. It's just more of what they already want. It's more of the information they're trying to get from their microphone and less of the stuff that they have to EQ out. Sure is known for their dynamic microphones. What we're finding from Next9 is how unique it is. The level of clarity we're getting out of these products is making the engineer's job significantly easier. That's what's magic about Ravonic technology.